to the bone. My buddy Cunningham coming up at 107 today is Chief of Police Tom Stryker, former Chief of Police Tom Stryker, to talk about what happened last night in and around Los Angeles. Uh, but first, uh, in the studio with me is Precious Allen. And Precious, welcome to the Bill Cunningham Show. Hello. I said when I met you, you look like you're a teenager yourself. But you're a 31-year-old mother of five, correct? Yes, I am. Now, let's talk about this because when I heard this happen, I had this image in my mind of Sandy Hook. According to the media, you and a friend of yours barged into Withrow High School and you went into a classroom and beat the hell out of a student uh, who was sitting there uh, with a padlock and some other things. And then you were arrested. And when I saw James Craig on television, he said it reminded him of Sandy Hook when someone was admitted uh, to the school and, like, committed crimes against children inside of a classroom. And uh, first, to give your history a little bit, tell us a little bit about yourself socially, because I, I read from Eric Dieter, your attorney, that uh, you're a Catholic, your mother of five, and you're an LPN. Tell, tell us a little bit of your social history. Yes, I do nursing um, full-time. I work long hour shifts. 13 hours a day, practically five days a week. Um, I'm a parent of five. I raised my children right in a strict rule house. Um, I'm a hard worker. Um, I nourish my kids well, take care of them. I work and come home. And and you had a great Catholic education, correct? Where'd you go to school? St. Boniface. And uh, you're an LPN. You work at uh, a facility where you work about 60 hours a week. Yes, and I work with Catholic nuns. So you and nuns are friends? Yes. Co-workers? Every day. I love nuns. Every day. Like Sister Monica Ann, who lives in Delhi, retired. I love her because nuns taught me as a boy. And nuns taught Eric Dieters, too, how to be a good lawyer. Now, tell me on this date because the media, you're telling me, you told me off there, what the media says happened at Withrow High School is false, correct? Correct. Tell me what happened that day. Because you went there, you're telling me, you went there to withdraw your daughter. Explain what happened. Well, I got a phone call from a concerned parent wanting me to meet my daughter at the bus stop. Said some girls ran up on a bus and um, threatened to beat her up. Three, uh, three, uh, three to four of them. And these are big girls. Yeah, big. Well, I haven't saw the rest of the girls, um, but yeah, they was big girls. And um, I go, I wake up, I get the phone call, and I say, "This is it. I'm going to withdraw my daughter today." I've been trying to withdraw her three months ago from the same bullying. It never stopped. So you're saying your daughter, and her na- her name is Cornisha has been viciously bullied for a long time at Withrow High School. Yes, it never stopped. Have you turned it in? Have you talked to the principal? I talked to the principal. I asked for a referral to um, change her school to Seton. I never wanted her to go to Withrow. Why? I wanted her education to be from Seton High. Well, why'd you put her in there in the first place? She wanted to go there. She had a conversation with her father. I was the black ball of the family of my immediate family because I have a Catholic education and I guess he didn't feel like we need to pay money for her to get a good education. And she wanted to go because her friends went there, which what normal kids do. They want to follow their friends that they went to junior high with, but it comes time to separate. And I had that conversation with my daughter and she just too young to understand. Uh, How old is your daughter? She's 14. 14. And so describe before the event in question, what did you go through with your daughter's bullying when she come home from school? What, what would she tell you? She wouldn't tell me anything. How'd you find out about it? I found out through parents. I didn't find out about none of this through Cornisha. Cornisha began to be silent in the house. She stays in her room. She mm. barely want to go to family functions. And I work a lot, so maybe... One day out of a weekend, I work every weekend, majority, but one day I would take off within a month to spend time with them and take them out to family functioning. Did you sense as a mother something was wrong with Cornisha? Yes, something was wrong with her. She was silent. Her grades dropped when she started at at Withrow. Smart girl. She gets there. She's bullied viciously by these girls. She couldn't she, learn. She withdraws. Her grades go down. What I've her, seen, she could not learn. Her behavior. But you, you know, instinctively as a mother, something's going on. Yes. And, and, then, and then other mothers told you 
that Cronisha and others are being bullied by this group at Withrow High School. Yeah, by the same girl. A big girl. Yeah. And so the day in question, describe what you did, because the media is saying, like, you barged in, you deceptively entered Withrow High School with the intent with a lock of beating. Explain what happened. I never saw a lock until I got after the fight when the uh, principal, myself, and a friend of mine got in a conference room in coordination and two security guards and one sheriff police. I never saw a lock until then, first of all. So I don't know how lock even got involved, but I asked my daughter, and she said, yes, she had a lock. Well, I get up that morning with the phone call. I said, this is it. I'm going over to the school to withdraw her. They're going to let her go today. I had to be to work within an hour and um, I parked on Montgomery Road. I walk in the main entrance of the building. I'm ringing the doorbell. It's the principal or the secretary sitting right there. And um, I'm ringing the doorbell, knocking on the door, and she didn't let me in. Somehow the door came open, and Don, which is a friend of mine, works at the same place I do, she went in. When she went in the door, I followed behind her. The door was open. The door was and open. And Don is D-A-W-N. It's a woman, right, Don? D-A-W-N. Yes, she's a woman. So Don went in, and you went in behind her. Yeah, and Cornisha went in behind me. I All made it right. I asked Cornisha, you know, um, where do she need to get her stuff, because she said she had a lot of belonging there. So I said, come on, let's get it, get you withdrawal, get you out of here. Was this early in the morning when school first opened? No. It was during the day? This was during the day. Okay. Yeah, well, I'm going to tell that. Um, well, when I go in the building, the door come open after the secretary say that she didn't buzz me in. Um, I make a right. I asked Cornisha what, where did she need to get her stuff. She said in her art class. So she's proceeding to take me to her art class. And meanwhile, when I turn the first right, as coming in the entrance, I see a security guard that I know. And he say, hey, how you doing? And we had a conversation. And um, So the, the, the security guard didn't stop you, no, didn't arrest you? I stopped the security say, guard. Say, how you doing? He saw you just, yeah. uh, you just had friendly, conversations. congenial conversations back yes. and forth. And that was it. That was it. Did he say you're here illegally or uh, assume the position or nothing? I let him know I was there to withdraw my daughter. And he, what did he say, the security guard? He said, yeah, I told him that she was being bullied. He said, oh, yeah, please do that. It's a lot of that going on here. At Withrow High School. All right, what happened next? We proceeded to go, up to go upstairs to the classroom. Cornisha knocked on the teacher's door. Was class in session? Class was supposed to be in session. The teacher was sitting at the desk, like, reading something. Kids were sitting on top of the Desk, I turn around and ask my daughter, is this what you be doing here? My daughter is frightened of me. You know, you could put a little fear in your kid. But my kid, she's like, no, mom, you know, fiercely, like, no, mom. I be sitting down, you know, I be getting my work done, like trying to get my work done. She, so you say, well, well, first time you see this classroom, the teacher is like reading something at the front. Yeah. And the other kids are like sitting on top of desks. Yeah. She's kind of talking to each other. Yeah. And that's class. That's class at Withrow. What happened next? What happened next is I stuck my head in. I proceeded to walk in and say, ma'am, may I talk with you? She said, sure. She get up out of chair. She walked towards me. Um, we in the classroom. Um, I said, well, I'm here to withdraw my daughter today. She's just here getting her belongings. Um, it's a student in class that's been, that hit her yesterday and showed up at the bus, on the bus, after school. And she said, she wasn't there the day before. I said, well, could you call Mr. Higgins up here? Because I know I spoke with Mr. Higgins before. He the principal. I wanted him to do the transfer before to withdraw Cornisha from withdrawal. So what the teacher but say? that day I, she called over the walkie-talkie. Yeah. And they were supposed to have been on their way. But while I'm asking the teacher to call Mr. Higgins, the other girl, she raised her hand, and she turned around with foul language. She jumped up out of her seat. Her back was facing me. I never did even know her. I didn't ask my daughter, you know, who she was or anything. This was the bully. The bully. Who beat your daughter the day before. The day And before. you didn't go in there even know 
who she is. Didn't I know didn't, who she was. No. Her back was facing me. She was sitting all the way across the room. Her chair was facing out of the window. I never knew who she was. Mm. This is my second time up to withdraw. I don't know anything about withdraw building, withdraw hallways, withdraw classrooms, any of that. I'm a full-time worker. I have four other children in, besides Cornisha to pay close attention to as well. Pay mm. attention to all of my children. You got five of them. But I have five. Now, now Mom, what happened when this bully, this, and, and she physically this was a large girl, when she stood up, what happened next? She proceeded towards me and cussed her. And you're a little, you're a little thing. Uh, people can't see you, but, yes, you I am. but you don't weigh 110, 120 pounds. Yes, I do. This woman outweighed you by 100 pounds? Yes. Uh, what happened next? She proceeded towards me. I put my hand up asking her to call her mom, baby. Baby, please call your mother up here. She cursed me again in foul language. So you're that, saying to the bully, get your mom up here, and you're trying to, you're trying to be the adult. Yeah. What happened next? She told me she didn't need her mom and other foul language. And she um, told my daughter, she said, I don't know why you think that you have a heart because your mom is up here. You know what I'd be doing to you, Cornisha. I said, what? She proceeded to rush towards my way from me talking with my daughter like, she proceeded to rush towards me. My daughter pushed me out of the way. Mm. What happened next? Then she swung at my daughter, and her and my daughter began to fight. Rolling around the floor? Rolling around the whole classroom with wow. the classmates in the room. I guess they the were. The room was crowded. They were reacting in some way. I had... Yes. The teacher even asked the classroom when the teacher and I was speaking the teacher asked the classroom to quiet down. She couldn't get that classroom quiet. I asked them to quiet down. So, the Mama, children... you're saying quiet down, everybody, and yeah. your daughter's rolling around with this big bully on the floor of Withrow High School in the art class. Yeah. In the middle of the, middle of the school day. Yes. All right. Uh, did you ever physically touch this other woman at all, the, the, this student, this bully? I mean, did you defend I didn't your touch daughter? Her. No. I didn't, I didn't go to fight. My daughter didn't go to fight. I didn't touch her in a manner to be striking, hitting her. I didn't touch her in a matter of to, you know, be in an aggressive way. I touched her to pull her off of my daughter. Did you do that? Yes, I did. Did you finally separate the two of them? Yes, I did. What happened next? What happened next is um, we entered the hall. They, the fight broke up. Cornisha and I was in the hallway with the teacher and a friend of mine with security guards, and the girl run out of the classroom charging me again. The big bully. And my daughter run over and start fighting. Again. Again. In the hallway. And the security guards broke it up that time. And at no point was there any lock or padlock or any lock. At that point, nobody hit anybody with a metal object. Is that fair to say? That's fair to say. I didn't Didn't say, happen? No. All right, what happened next? What happened next is we go downstairs to a conference room. The principal, myself, Don Bruner, uh, and Cornisha, and two security guards and a sheriff. Mm. They screaming in a rage, my head off, as of I came into school to cause a problem. I assured them that I didn't. The um, principal was asking questions, writing down, you know, what Cornisha was telling him about all the bullying that was going on. The principal asked my daughter, Cornisha, why didn't you come to me again? What'd she say? She said, you never stopped it before, out of breath. You know, you she's know just she was gasping funny. for air. She said, you never stopped it before. He said, well, why didn't you tell your mom? She said, because my mom would tell me to ignore the girls and go to school and get your education. Right. And then when you finally got a loan, and you've been charged with felonious assault, which is causing serious physical harm to another. Was this bully, was she f seriously physically harmed, to your no. knowledge? No. I think it was a children fight. Well, was your daughter, Cornisha, was she hurt? Yes. Well, she what was hurt 
physical and mental. What injuries was it? Just facial injuries and hair pulling and that kind of stuff? Yes. Is she doing okay now? Yes. Now, when, when you were finally, you were finally arrested and hauled out of there, correct? Yes. Tell me how that happened. Well, we sat there with the principal. We had a little meeting with the principal. During the meeting, it was a kid living in the Price Hill area somewhere in the building trying to kill himself. Oh. So the security guards had to jump out of the meeting section with me and run somewhere and get this kid. They brought the kid through the area where this conference was being held. Mm. So at no point did you deceptively enter Withrow High School. At no point did you even know who the bully was. At, you went there without the intent of causing harm to anybody. And at no point to your knowledge was a lock involved to hit somebody in the face with. You're so right. And, and that's the truth. That's the truth. How do you feel about these charges leveled against you, which are could carry up to 10 years in prison? How do you feel about this? I'm broken. Tell me By how. the whole ordeal. Because I've been having things going on with myself, and I just don't, I didn't have time for it, a fight to even happen. I'm tired when I enter the school building. I work long hours, and I had to be to work that day, the next day, next day after that. And, Cor- have- and Cornisha is still locked up in juvie? Yes, she is. How do you feel about that as a mother? Broken. I sleep in her bed every night. Because it is so hard at what? She's, she went through in school and what she's going through now. You worried about your little girl locked up in, in yes, jail? Yes, and I feel like I failed my baby. How is that, Mom? How do you feel that? Why do you say that? Because she stated that I would just tell her to go to school and get her education and ignore those girls. So she felt trapped. She said, I can't tattle or rat them out to my mom or to the school because it'll get worse. And she doesn't think the school will do anything. And your only intent was to protect I was you. believing in Mr. Higgins. Is he the principal? Yes. And you believed in him. And now, what do you feel now? I don't like the school. I don't care for the school. I lost interest in it the second midterm. So with I was wondering why she was bringing in bad grades. She never got in any trouble in school. She never even had an argument in school. She has such a great history all the way up until this year. Do you worry what happens to your daughter in the future with this, this group? Yes. And you? You worry about retaliation? Yes. I, I know your daughter is not going to go back to Withrow High School. No, she's not. You're going to try to get her to Seton as a good Catholic mother? Absolutely. All right. Uh, well, Precious Allen, thanks for coming in. And uh, I'm going to stay in touch with your lawyer, Eric Dieters. And you got the right lawyer representing you. And, and I hope justice is done in your case. But I know you're torn up by this. Thank you. All right. Uh, we'll continue with more on 700 WLW. Whatever happened last season happened last season. The slate is now clean. This is when the new season is born. Batters get their time in. Pitchers stretch out winter muscles. And wide-eyed rookies fight for their spot.